How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Local Marketing Institute Q&A Live with our special guest, Darren Shaw from Wild White Spark. Next hey, slide, please. Next slide, please, brother. All right. So thank you, everybody, for coming and joining us. As my, myself, Ben Fisher, your host, Steady Demand. You can reach me on Twitter at The Social Dude. Of course, my fabulous co host, Greg Gifford from Search Lab Digital at Greg Gifford on Twitter. And Darren Shaw, the excellent Darren Shaw from White Spark at Darren Shaw underscore. Yeah. Yeah. The actual at Darren Shaw is some real estate agent in Ontario. Really? I'm like, I, did, I, yeah. I never noticed that. Yeah, he uh, he got the handle, and I, I tried to get it from him, but he's actually pretty active. He's got like ten thousand followers, and he's serious about Twitter. So he's like, "No, get out of here. It's mine." <laughs> oh man, gosh! All right, well, hey, what can you do? All right. Speaking cool. of Twitter handles, do you regret setting up your Twitter handle as the social dude? <laughs> I'm the social dude. <laughs> you know, I do, and I don't because <laughs> it's it's well known so it just kind of stays out there i've yeah. thought about changing it over to at ben fisher or just like buying sure, yeah, exactly. benjamin fisher or something like that sure. but then i think about like you know the transition and what that would actually take and i saw gather up do it they were yeah. successful at it but I've, i know so many people who have failed at it too so it's like eh. yeah but that's why i'm wondering like you, you are kind of locked in and so you're the social dude forever it's just yep my i am i'm the social <laughs> dude forever but whenever i set up something on a new platform yeah i go with ben fisher yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like if we all do blue sky which i don't think we will but who knows you know i'm not i'm probably not gonna bother we'll see yeah if it, if it really takes off but i jumped into mastodon too early and then i was like ah it was a big waste of time <laughs> yeah same here same here i hated yep. mastodon all right oh hey next slide <laughs> so <can> socials. <laughs> follow us on facebook we have probably a little bit north of 2.2 thousand followers at this point um but you can find us on there i mean we're there answering questions giving you news everything that you need on a daily basis and then finally you can have our voice in your ear on the go Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Just go ahead and uh, hit the local marketing institute.com slash podcast. And you can go ahead and download our podcast and listen to it whenever you want. Um, and with uh, that, yes. So today we have the fabulous Darren Shaw. Darren has been a good friend and colleague of, of Greg and I for many, many years. And we all participate in his local search ranking factors study. So today we are so happy to, to have you here, D, um, to tell us about it. We're going to go into news really quickly, and then we are going to just spend a load of time on that. So first up, we've got the news. <laughs> Uh, thank you, dude. All right. So, Greg, hey, man, tell us, dude. So you, uh, out of all three of us, were the only one who went to local U this time. Yeah. So it out. it's always fun. It's a good time to see everybody. Uh, you know, it was a really long trip for me to get there because it was in my hometown. So oh no, that part was a little bit of a beating. But yeah, no, it was cool. It was fun to see everybody. Fun to get everybody back together. You know, see faces out in the audience. Uh, Trisha was there, so we got to hang out a bit uh is she here today let's see i'm looking on the attendees list Ugh, not here what she's probably, she's probably still in dallas like i know she was she was hanging out a little bit afterwards so she may be like flying home or whatnot but yeah no it was cool uh joy didn't have a like an official photographer so i brought my camera and i took some nice photos of the event and got to hang out with my buds from places scout so we had some good meals and then we played board games as always so uh we played with Curtis from the Transparency Company. We played uh, Nemesis, which is the really cool board game that's like uh, basically the plot line of the movie Alien. And Joy got killed by aliens. I died because the ship exploded and Curtis won. So, you, you know, there was a local you where I played Nemesis with everybody, right? Yeah. And you uh, cheated. No, I didn't cheat. cheat. Did cheat Come dude. on. It was not cheating, it was totally strategy. I was down to like what? One hit point. Right. I had like no had power ups, no legs and nothing. one arm. And my goal for when for those of you who don't know the game Nemesis, it's this really rad game, but it's sort of cooperative, but sort of competitive in that everyone has their own little objective cards. 
And my objective was that Ben's character had to die for me to win the game. <laughs> and he just hung out in the engine room and never left the room and just passed all of his turns because he got so almost killed at the beginning. And so he ended up winning the game because everybody else died from aliens and he just stuck back in this room. It was Yeah, I just kind of chilled out and I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I think but my... Local U is great. Yeah, anyway. Everybody should definitely check it out. The next one is Friday the 13th of october in toronto and darren you're going to be emceeing that aren't you that's the plan yes so i have committed oh, you're to that. muted bro what's that no 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 i can hear him oh were you just messing with us no i unmuted you can hear me oh. now right okay. yeah, I can hear you now. We yeah, can yeah, yeah. so yeah i am uh i am committed to MC for that event and barring any uh you know diseases i will be there that's my plan so uh, mm-hmm. I do plan to go. And I think Allie's uh, from our team, Allie Margerson, she'll be speaking at that event. Nice. So it'll be good. I'm mean, looking forward to it. I haven't been at a live event in three years. Uh, I know everyone yeah. else got back into into doing things before I did. But uh, yeah, this will be it for me. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Yeah. Well, looking forward to seeing you. I don't think I've seen you actually since, gosh, what was it, MozCon? Probably a MozCon like three, four years ago. Yeah, Something like that, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, everybody sign up for that. If you're not already going, you definitely should. All right. Uh, the next thing is, is for those of you, as you know, we talk about AI every once in a while on here. And so um, the kind of cool news is this, is that, you know, when we look at AI, a lot of us SEOs basically are really worried about, okay, well, what's L, you know AI going to do to local SEO? Is it going to kill us, right? You know, or are we going to all be out of a job because too many people are using AI? Um, of course, I don't think that is the answer personally myself. But, you know, now Bing basically has gone ahead and given us a nice little gift. And that is, is that uh, Bing Chat's going to be showing referring data. And we're going to be able to see in our Google Analytics and Google Search Console, any kind of clicks. And of course, in the Bing version of that, uh, any kind of clicks, basically, and how many impressions that you've gotten uh, within Bing Chat. So it's nice. There's going to be a little bit of data that shows you at least how it's doing for you. Next thing. This is kind of interesting. I don't know. There was a lot of hubbub on Twitter about it. I personally don't think it's too much of a big deal. But, you know, whatever. And that is, is that Google is now texting people and messaging them, uh, basically asking if you want to update your hours. Okay. I mean, Duplex has been doing this for three years now. Um, so, but anyway, that's that. Now, let's go ahead and act on, I mean, you guys have anything, any thoughts on either Bing or the texting? Nah. Nah, yeah. All right. Light news day. Okay. Now let's get to the good stuff. All right. So D, tell us a little bit about the local search ranking factors. How'd you even get involved? In hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're wow, about wow, to wow, talk wow. about the new local search ranking factors. Aha! I got it right finally. Yes. Right, finally. <laughs> there we go. So tell us. Yeah, so tell us this. Tell, why don't you tell us the story about local rank factors and how you got involved in them in the first place, man? Because didn't uh, Mim had it first, right? Yeah, so David Mim started the survey in 2008. That was the first edition of it. And I think he was inspired by Moz's search ranking factors survey. Um, and he wanted to do one for local because, you know, he and Mike Blumenthal and a handful of other people were you know, researching, trying to figure out the local pack, the 10 pack at the time, actually. And so the first edition of it, I think only had like 20 contributors. Uh, Some of the OGs of local SEO all contributed. And then he carried it every single year. He would redo uh, the survey and it evolved uh, even through his time at Moz after his company Get Listed got bought by Moz. So he ran the survey until 2017. And I guess he just got tired of it. So he he put the call out and asked if anyone was interested in taking uh, it over. And I jumped on the opportunity, thrilled to be doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful resource for our community. And so what it is, is, did I say 2017? So I took it over in 2017. And what <laughs> yeah. it is, is uh, I survey the the top 
experts in local search. Uh, you know, Ben and, and Greg, you you both contribute. Uh, many other uh, local search luminaries that you've probably seen around the socials, they all contribute as well. And so when you aggregate all of their thoughts about what is actually has an impact on local SEO rankings, you really get to surface to the top, the real things, the things that really have an impact. And then the stuff that's at the very bottom that you know most people don't score very highly, then you know those factors, probably not much of a factor. So it's really helpful to get input from 40 plus of the uh, local search people. And it becomes basically, in my mind, the Bible of local SEO. This is what actually impacts rankings. And so it's not just factors. A factor is one part of it. You know, what are the factors for ranking in Google? But I also ask questions about what helps conversions. That's an important section of the survey as well. I asked a new question this year about local services ads. How do you improve rankings in local services ads? That's becoming yep. a growing um, interest for people in our space. And I also asked how are the contributors using AI in their daily practice. And so I was able to create a, a data table on that as well to see ideas for, um, you know, how to use uh, AI for local SEO. You know, and I will say one thing I love, Darren, is, is that especially this year, um, I think it's what, 44 contributors? I think right? so, yeah. Is that about I right? About, but yeah, something um, like that. But, uh, but what I love this year is, is that you included some people who are really what I feel is up and comers. People yeah. who are, you know, it's like, it's the new guard, I think. Yeah, totally. Instead mm -hmm. of the old guard. Yeah, we don't want to always be the old guard. That's actually really important. And so um, every year I'm always like, you know, throughout the year, actually, I keep my eye out. And when I see someone like on social or, you know, they got a YouTube channel, they're really interesting people that really seem to know what they're talking about when it comes to local SEO, then they go on my spreadsheet. I got it. I already have a 2024 spreadsheet started and it's like nice. new people to invite. And so uh, I always invite new people because sometimes people drop off too. They're like, like, you know, I've had some people, they're like, I don't really do local SEO anymore. And so they don't really contribute anymore. And so, I'm always looking for new people that are, um, you know, interesting and seem to know their way around local SEO. And I think that's really important in, in our industry um, is to help elevate people, you yeah. know, especially sure. those who, like you said, they they really, it's like they're, they're doing a good, good job, you know, and they know what yeah. they're talking about and they're, they're valuable. And so, of course, I mean, this is a great way to show that their opinions are valuable and give them a little bit of a push you know, to, to come up with the industry. But I mean, I, I personally, I love working on the local uh, search ranking factors every year, you know, so it's a lot of fun. It's like yeah. this how year. How long did it like, take you? Both of you, how long did it take you to do the survey? <sighs> I think it was me, faster this year because of the way that you switched yeah. it and you didn't okay. have to like, the interface was easier to do this year than it's been in the past where you had to drag and then figure out how many do I have and do I have my 10 or <laughs> wait, wait, now I found something else and I got to replace like that always seemed to waste a lot of time. So I feel like it was a lot faster this year, but I honestly don't remember how long it took me. Being able to tab and just tab and click a number yeah. made it super fast. Right. You know, Good. Um, cool. there were certain wow, things that like that. You know, being able to do that and then, but I would say that I would definitely revisit a portion of it. And that is more along the organic side, because it's like having a bunch of organics when it's like mixed with the local, it's like, I'm just in a growing tab zero, tab zero, tab zero, one, tab zero, tab zero, tab zero, one. Well, it's shocking to see people that didn't actually do it that way. It's really interesting to see the data. You get to really see like how people think about local SEO when you get to look at their results. And uh, yeah, it's, it's some of the, some of the stuff ever get is very surprising. Do you ever get it and look at somebody's answers and just go, wow, I thought you knew your stuff and you clearly don't know how this works. Yep. There were five people that I said, thanks for, thanks for trying out, but you didn't make the team. <laughs> um, so in, the, in that two they those? filled out surveys, but their survey responses were not included this year. Correct. So they, they, wow. they completed the survey but the data was so questionable that I was not able to include it. Hey, it, it, is does, what happen. it, is, it right? does happen. This is the it first is. year that I've straight up disinvited people. Usually I just ingest it and be like, well, if that's what you think, I guess we'll include it in the survey. But there was just so like just straight up egregious answers. Like, you know, one of the first things I look at is 
what score did you give geotagging images? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so those, those people stand out right out of the gate. <laughs> like so. Joey just said it in the chat before you even put it up that, yeah, the people that thought <laughs> exactly. geotagging worked. So at I look at that first. Them. I'm like, and then I have a number of other things that I look at and I'm like, that's what you think that? Well, hmm, I maybe don't know local SEO as much as I thought you did. <laughs> I swear some year I'm going to come in and just burn that year and be like, okay, I'm not going to be a part of I'll it. Kick you just, out. Yeah. Don't even try me. And <laughs> just do all <laughs> everything wrong. Like everything that's bad and wrong rank really yeah. high and everything that works rank yeah. really low just to have you be like, gee, what the hell, man? And then you'd figure <laughs> out I was doing it as a joke. So it would clearly be yeah. wrong across the board, but you know, I just feel like that would be good for some comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. So we need a, a local search ranking factors t-shirt now made that says geotagging for the win on the back. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That was, that was a <laughs> you know, that's what was on uh, D-Ron this week at Local U, right? You have to explain what D-Ron is, I think. Okay. So for people that don't know what D-Ron is, I don't even, was it for MozCon Local that it got printed out the first time? Like it's been around for a long time. It was a Local U. Uh, so we... We were a sponsor of a local U event, but I couldn't make it. So I sent my cardboard cutout. <laughs> and so now this cardboard cutout has been named D-Ron and he is or at Mike every Blumenthal. local U yeah. event. They actually mailed the cardboard cutout to me a couple of weeks before <laughs> the event because they were worried that maybe the hotel venue may lose it or something might happen. And they just trusted sending it to my office better than that because like it's really important we can't lose Deron, you know he's been lost before did you know that that, that carrie hill's really? husband threw Deron in the garbage <laughs> and, oh no way yeah. but there's a little like speech bubble off to the side and it's whiteboard so you can write whatever and so yeah. i don't even know who it was this time somebody wrote uh geotech oh, it was, images for the it was definitely jason brown that wrote that. how was it yeah <laughs> um but the uh yeah, so the D-Ron that you saw is D-Ron 2.0. The, the first D-Ron lives in a landfill somewhere oh, near wow. Denver. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we talk about the factors and what, you know, let's give some insight yeah, for sure. instead, instead of just shooting the shit here the whole time. So one of the yep, things yep, that yep, I yep, like yep. the best every year is when you go in and you talk about, hey, either here's how this factor has changed over the last few years or... Yeah. Here's something that we thought was really either interesting or something that we knew about, but it was interesting to see how much people either bumped it up or bumped it down in terms of importance. Yeah, I can highlight a few of those. Um, I do like to talk about the factor groups first. So basically, the local search ranking factors are grouped into seven key groups. So we have Google business profile signals, signals coming from your website, signals coming from reviews, signals coming from links behavioral signals, citation signals, and personalization. So those are the seven uh, areas. And I one of my favorite things to do is to compare how those, the perceptions of like how to weight those groups uh, changes every year. And so if you go from 20, should I share my screen? Is that helpful? Sure. Yeah. Go right. for it, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because it's nice to see the visuals to go along with this. All right, I'm going to share if I can. I can. All right, I'm sharing that. So this is the chart that I'm talking about here. So these are the factor groups across the bottom. And it's really cool to see that from 2015 to 2023, you can see how, you know, in 2020, in 2015, the local search practitioners on that survey thought that the website and links were driving local search more than, you know, Google business profile. And look at reviews back in 2015. That's really mm -hmm. amazing, right? Yeah. And so now, and then you can see how it has sort of changed, perceptions have changed over time that your signals on your Google business profile drive local SEO more than, you know, than anything. This really took off in, in uh, 2018. We saw a huge spike and then it continued to grow and it actually tapered off a little bit in 2021. So it dropped, I think, from like 36 to 32 or something. And actually, I think that that drop makes sense. I think it was overweighted for sure. I still think it's overweighted. I actually think that your website and links uh, do play more of a role. I actually think reviews might be slightly over overstated and i think behavioral should go up a little bit too but that's just me mm -hmm. this is a survey of the industry so it's not just my thoughts and uh and so that's actually why it's really great to see this and so these are some interesting things you can see how google business profiles raised over time 
and link signals continue to drop. And I think that that actually correlates well with uh, traditional SEO too. Your people in traditional SEO that aren't doing local, they're seeing content as more important, which you can track here, and links as becoming less important. But mm. anyways, I think that's always helpful. Let's look at the real factors. Um, so this is the factor list. This is the table here. And so this has 149 factors. That's actually a new thing this year. Before I would just, in my reports, I would just give you the top 20. Now you can see the whole freaking list and you can do cool things like this. We have a little filter so you can, so, you know, let me see all the factors related to links. There they are. So now you can see, you know, the details about links that are more valuable than other things. Or I could say, show me. I did not know you could do that this year. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that either. Yep. Nice. Well, there you go. Now you know. You know, you, you know, know what you should do, D? Factors? Underneath of that, you should just like do a little hyperlink or something like that, you know, to give people a cue, like just put the word link there so they can yeah, just link. click or, it. Or and like sort. actually put all the factor names. You can just click on it and it would just populate this filter. Factor groups, you know? Mm. Anyway. Gives you, you more go. of an excuse to use those kick-ass hand-drawn icons that you guys created this year. Oh, that's Nick. Nick Pirano. So yeah, he started man. doing all these awesome uh, hand-drawn things. He's got an iPad nice. and, pencil, and he, he does all these awesome things. You should see our new website. We're going to launch it like next week. It, it looks awesome. Nice. Big improvement. Anyways, sidebar. Um, so I have a few highlights in my analysis about things that are interesting, things that changed. And I think that's what I want to highlight here. Um uh, noteworthy observation. So this one here, uh, this factor, sustained influx of reviews over time. Um, this is a very interesting factor that came out of nowhere. Um, it's And it's I think it makes perfect sense. This is a thing to think about. And I think the, the point here is that if you... If you blast your email list, so you, you currently have two reviews on your Google business profile. You blast your email list, uh, and now you've got 73 uh, reviews on your uh, Google business profile, and then you don't get any more reviews, that is not helpful. So it's helpful to actually continue to get, you know, two, three, five reviews per month and keep them coming in. So that's what this factor is. And I think it's a very valuable factor to highlight as something that people should think about in their local SEO. Make sure that it's not just the burst of reviews you're getting them in. Yep. Um, internal linking is growing this year. And I think that makes all the sense. I've been hearing stuff like from quite a few people in traditional SEO that an internal link carries as much weight as an external link. Google does not differentiate. And that's a really powerful concept. If you think about that, how hard it is, it is it for you to go out and get a link? You want to build a link to the landing page that your Google business profile is linked to. So most cases, that's the homepage. Sometimes it could be a location landing page. But getting an external site to link to that, so hard, right? But you've now got, let's say you have a website with 200 pages. you got 200 pages that you can build links from. And all of those pass that equity. So I think it's really interesting to think about that and think about the benefits of internal linking. And I think if you are on WordPress, there's an excellent plugin called InLinks that uh, you can use to help you uh, identify internal linking opportunities and, and add them really easily. So... That's a, that's a big one, and I think it's an important takeaway that people should be taking advantage of. And I've absolutely heard both uh, Colin and Joy at Sterling Sky say that they've been having lots of success by just rolling out internal linking, looking for internal linking opportunities, executing them on the site, rankings go up. Then it makes good sense. Um, let me talk about this one. This one really bugs me. <laughs> so back to your... Number four here, and Ben, you, you're probably gonna. This is gonna resonate with you. Of so we it saw, is. we saw that actually in the 2021 version of the survey, that was this this factor was factor 10. So mm. it had a hundred percent increase up the rankings from position 10 to position five. And so people might be thinking, wow, spam fighting, it's so valuable, it's so important. I actually don't think that's the case. I think that. This is a reflection of the way I changed the survey. As Greg mentioned earlier, it used to be this thing where you drag your factors and then you sort them. Now I just asked to give a score and I can show you what it looks like when you're completing the survey. So you actually score it. So if the factor was, you know, what is the ranking impact of spam fighting? People are scoring it high because if you can get a competitor removed, yep. then 
that actually does have a very good impact on your ranking. So it's understandable that people scored it highly. They're like, oh yeah, it's like a three or a four when you can do it. But the thing that's not encapsulated in this and this movement is, you know, don't be just confused by it, don't be misled by it, is that spam fighting is no more effective now than it ever has been. We track all of our spam fighting efforts at WhiteSpark for our 300 locations that we manage. And they are, you know, we're getting like a 20 to well, 30% success rate for things like keywords in the name, um, you know, review spam. Keywords in the name is usually the big one that we're trying to report on, but it's it doesn't have great success. Fake listings, you'll have higher success. We're trying to report those, but you know, keywords in the name is one of the big ones, and it's just not overly more successful. So why don't you add a qualifier and a secondary question? What is and your success? With spam well, just, that's a different question, right? This this is this is the way I want it to be. What is the ranking impact? Because that's what that table is supposed to give you, right? Mm. So, you know, that I could ask that question as a separate thing, like what is effective, what's not effective, what is, or add another thing here, like effectiveness of implementing this, maybe. There you go. There you go. Because like, you know, if you're <laughs> like, for instance, like, of course, you know, I love this question because of our, we have an average of 50%, you know, when it comes to removal, not just names, but actual removals. So we find it to be like super duper amazing for our clients because we can just get our clients to move straight on up. Yep. Um, but but I know that the industry average is not that. The industry average, I think, is like 5%, maybe 10%, yeah. something like that. But it is interesting that it went up. We can't all be as awesome as you, Ben. <laughs> you're, sp you're spam fighting. <laughs> it's um, my team, my team. I want to talk about owner responses. Anyway. So this factor plummeted in the rankings. Uh by over 100%, which of course is good. This is actually a uh, not a factor. So we we all know that it's a myth that adding keywords to your owner responses, but a presence of owner responses, while not a ranking factor, it is such a great conversion factor. And that's actually why I think it was in the 2020 version, I actually created a new section where I asked about conversion factors because owner responses are actually really valuable for where is although I'm not seeing a ranking very high. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Number 10. Yeah, it still made the top 10. So you'll actually notice that in conversion factors that reviews, review related signals are important for conversions. Having lots of reviews, having positive sentiment in reviews, having a good rating and responding to your reviews, very important for conversions. And so this is so valuable. A lot of people are focused on rankings, but Ranking number one or two or three, you get in the pack, but if your listing looks like garbage, you're not going to get a call. So it's like, <laughs> yep. it's so important and valuable yeah. to invest in some of these things that while the Q&A section, it doesn't impact your rankings. Same with the product section. Products is such a, a perfect conversion factor because you can add all these products. Even, and if you're like a lawyer or a service business, you can add services add, as products. And they have such high visibility on your profile, they directly lead to conversions. People look at it and be like, oh yeah, they offer that thing that I do. And they can read about it. It's like, it's like, would you make a website that only had your name, address, phone number on it? Or would you make a website that talked about everything that you do? And that's what you got to do with your Google business profile. And that's what this conversions factor section is about. Yeah, I got a break there, man. I mean, I think it was a genius idea for you to go ahead and add the conversion area. Sure. You know, because I mean, let, let's be real. It's like there's only so many levers that you can pull in GBP yeah. to impact ranking, right? It's only like four. So Five everything else is our services. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, you know, but from a conversion standpoint, this is the, the end of the day. This is what merchants want, right? Yeah. We want business calls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, we should talk about myths real fast and then I'll let's see, I'll let you guys ask me some questions. Um, so we also have this section called myths. Previous years, I would ask the contributors, what are the things that you think definitely don't impact rankings? So they have to pick their top 20 and then sort them. Uh, this year, instead of that, I simply asked the question, I just asked them to score it. So, you know, you can see, if I can find it here. You can see here, it's just you just score it. So the myths this year are not like guaranteed myths and almost every factor has at least some value. So if I look at the myths, um, where myths, yeah, here it is. So I'm gonna expand the myths. You can actually see that, or maybe I guess, did we only do the top 30 in myths? I thought we did the whole list. 
Oh yeah, it's only top four, 30. But look, geotagging photos still got two points. Someone, <laughs> two people gave it a score of one. Two people that I didn't ask to leave the survey. And so- Oh because, really? They're still in the survey? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I won't, wow. I won't name and shame them, but there no, are some. No, no. And it, you know what? This is actually a really interesting point. <clears throat> you can't rule it out. This is a survey of opinions. So somebody, they, they might know local SEO really well, and you can tell by the rest of their answers and their thoughtful uh, responses to the commentary questions. They, these are people that definitely know local SEO. But when asked the question, do geotagging photos have an impact on ranking? While we mostly all laugh about it and we know it's a myth, they might give it a one because of that tiny hint of doubt, that tiny hint that says mm. maybe a little bit. And so it would be rude to say, oh, you're, you're, all your answers are garbage just because you know, you're like, I'm not completely sure. ruling it out because we're all guessing about this stuff. This is a survey of opinions. And so, you know, but the myths section is helpful for you to really know what the local search experts typically don't think impact rankings. So keywords in your description, we all know that that doesn't have an impact on ranking. Keywords in order responses to reviews. Nope, don't do it. This is a stupid one. Uh, GBP messaging, like turning on messaging, that's going to help you. Keywords in Q&A, that's a great one to know about. People think that they should keyword stuff the Q&A. Uh, Google posting, like posting frequency should not have an impact on rankings, although a lot of people say that it does. And so that's this is an interesting one, right? So you get the 22, you get some score there, and you hear a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, well, we noticed rankings went up when we did post. <laughs> but, you know... I'm still very skeptical. And that's actually why you see low rankings on these things. But these are myths. Yeah. But, you know, as the further you get down this list, it gets more questionable, right? Keywords and products. Well, some people thought that that might actually help rankings. Anyways. You know, the are... interesting thing about, I mean, keywords and products, right? That actually could have a ranking factor in organic search. Since the products are sometimes included in organic products from Merchant Center. Oh. In search now. This is interesting. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't heard this before. That's new. Yeah. That's news to me, what you just said. No, yeah, yeah. I forget who uh, who um, saw that. But yeah, I mean, so keywords could help there, mm -hmm. right? So, but it's, I mean, it's still kind of a, like, does it help with GPP? No, of course not. But no. in organic, maybe a little bit. I got a question for you guys. Uh, do you think that changes made on your Google business profile have any impact on local organic rankings? No. Ben, no. Greg? When you, uh, can you clarify what you yeah. mean by changes on your profile? Yeah, so let's say you go and you you add services, you, you change your primary categories, you add additional categories to your Google business profile. Could those changes on your Google business profile have any impact in the, or like the blue links, the organic rankings. Oh, Does, I don't there think is, so. Your local you don't organic. think so, right? Why I, do you I, ask? Do you think so? A lot of people think so because you will see for uh, factors that are like when people were scoring in, in the survey. This, this may be a pretty good session because you're getting a lot of insights on the survey here. So you can see actually, here's these. this was taken from my results, right? So I said zero. No, if you complete your Google business profile, it's not going to have any impact on your local organic. A lot of people though, like half of them, will you'll see some scores on the local organic for GBP only factors. The additional categories is a great one. A lot of people gave that a local organic score. And so I think it's a very interesting topic to like, you know, we need to have like a YouTube live See, that's debate. That's where I would want to go. Like, I get that you want to keep this like anonymized, but that's where it would almost be worth going. Hey, look, you know the people that submitted that. Maybe just set up a Zoom call with the five yeah. to ten people or whatever, and say, "Tell me why you put something here." Like, I'm curious. Exactly. You know, what do you know that I don't know? Because I did not think that additional yeah. categories would impact your local organic results. And I, I think there's a lot of speculation and that we're all speculating anyways. That's what SEO is. So there's a lot of speculation where you're thinking like, well, if I add those additional categories, 
Google can now connect my website. Like we know that the website is connected to your Google business profile. And so maybe those additional categories will now help me rank better for those terms in the local organic results as well. I actually think that the local organic results, the blue links do not reference your Google business profile, but maybe they know something I don't. Or is it possible that people confuse the word local organic with local pack. I don't know, man. They're side by side here. <laughs> it's like, well, but I, I know, local, but yeah. it's like, I, I know it's like when I was doing it at least, right. It's like, I had to, I had to make a conscious effort to say, okay, local organic does not include the three pack. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Right. So it's like, I, I did. Oh have, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? That well, now I tell you, I say pack right here, pack finder. But, but, slash but you're saying yeah. local organic. So in other words, it would they it be better be. if you just called it organic? Oh, Nick was advocating for that, actually. He was telling me, Nick was saying, I think you should just call it organic. I'm like, well, it's kind of different. And so it's very specific. It's like Venice, right? It's like, is it? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, all right. Maybe with, with you back and Nick up, I, I could be convinced. I mean, the whole thing is the local search ranking factor study. You could probably drop local from Pathfinder and from organic. So now you yeah. just have Pathfinder local. and organic. Maybe that. But maybe. here's the thing. We're making the assumption that maybe they got confused. And again, maybe they weren't confused. I don't think they, they were. I think that we they don't know. Or maybe think. they're not as good at local SEO as we thought they were. Yeah. There's that too. I mean, there's because... You know, I mean, it's like we we know that there's the local algorithm, then there's the, I'm sorry, the organic algorithm and the local yeah. algorithm on top. And that's how it works. And organic feeds into local, local does not feed into organic. I it's think it's been yeah. that way for a long, long that's time. What, that's what a lot of people think. That's what a lot of the local search experts think. But I think you made an interesting statement, Greg. You said... Maybe they don't know local as well as we thought they did. But you end up in this echo chamber. So we have a freaking echo chamber of local SEO that happens right now. And it's this freaking survey that's creating it. And so it's dangerous <laughs> to rule people out. It's dangerous to rule out their observations. We don't want to do that. We'll be like, oh, you said that keywords in the, in the products impact rankings get out of here but know what happens and freaking joy is the very best at doing this is actually studying it getting some real conclusive evidence and changing beliefs and so this is where you have to be careful to not rule it out because it's a survey of opinions and sometimes they might actually know interesting things that we don't and so you have to you have to you have to take it yeah. all I mean, yeah. I, I agree with that. I mean, it's like well, uh, just recently, it's like, you know, uh, Joy went ahead and did the whole test on services, right? Yeah. When yes. I first saw that, I was like, eh, it's one test. Yeah. And then I saw you, right? And I saw you do it. And I was like, okay, now it's two tests. And yeah. so I was like, screw it. I'm doing the test. And I did it. And holy shitness. <laughs> yeah. I was that that also, it's such a fun one. But it also, fun one. to use a sound button, I think... Yeah, it depends. Because oh, like there was using the services that, depends? Not with no, services. No, not, not that. No, <laughs> I'm talking about one person's study or opinion could potentially unlock other things. It could just be that it was an unrelated correlation. Like there was somebody last year that was like, oh, I changed my car dealer categories from whatever I, it, you were in on this i don't remember the details but it was something where like they changed their categories to something that seemed totally counterintuitive and they got more visibility and we were all like no nah, oh, bro yeah. i don't think so and then a bunch of us went and tested it and it didn't work for anybody yeah. so it clearly was something else in that case so exactly there yeah. there are times where somebody comes out and says something on twitter or wherever or publishes something on their site and they're like oh my gosh look at this new thing in local SEO and here's how it really works. And everybody just believes it. And the, uh, this is one of the things I talked about at the conference at local U this week is like, just test stuff for yourself make sure that you're not blindly yeah. trusting everything. Yeah. It's just because one person says we did this and it worked for a client. Yeah. Even if they did it and worked for two clients, doesn't mean that that's really how it works. Cause it's well, so, exactly. you know, it is. correlation is not causation. You know, I hear this one all the time. I actually have asked people, 
when they've completed the survey, I'd be like, hey, I noticed that you said that keywords in the description impact the Google business profile description impact rankings. Why do you think that? And and the person that I asked that to showed me a top ranking lawyer and said, look, they got keywords in their description. And I'm like, that's not right. conclusive evidence. <laughs> they're, they're rank, that, that's not why they're ranking. So, yeah. it, you know, those kinds of things uh, don't help. But yeah, anyways, I, I want to show this services thing. So I, you probably, you may have seen my research on this where this is like, I get it. I got a week of baseline data where I didn't add the services. Then I added the service. You can still see this on my screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Then I added the services. Look at that. Wowie. Right. And so then someone said, oh, well, maybe it was an algorithm update. And I'm like, well, okay, maybe. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to remove the services. So I removed the services, boom, I go right back down. And then, and then I think Joyce said, well, add them back again. So I did it. Look, I haven't, I haven't published this graphic yet, but this is when I added them back. So I don't know, man. Yep. Services, <clears throat> could you find more conclusive data than this chart right here? I don't think so. My my chart actually uh, is not as impressive as your humpback chart. It's so um, great. Yeah, I it, it. It is, so, I mean, that's beautiful is what that is. But yeah, it yeah. shows the same type of data. You know, right. I'm, I'm just going through the removal phase right now. It's been about a week. Yeah. And um, something that I'll just say here, and that is, is that I noticed that the lag is 72 hours. So, so I know, which 72 is 72 hours. Yeah. Oh, shit. You're so, you saw the same thing? Well, it is always ah. three days. And I'm like, what? Why Amazing. is it three days? Because almost everything else that you do on your Google business profile is 24 hours. Like if yeah, you change exactly. your business name, you change yep. your categories, you should see yep. the ranking impact quickly within 24 hours. So it is, I did notice the 72 and it's very interesting. And it's like, why services being 72? What is the different system happening over at Google? It probably has a little bit to do with the website i would think personally wow. um because of crawling yeah more than anything else because remember when they add they introduced services in the first place they automatically yeah. added services yeah based on category and based on website yeah, anyway you want to see the website for this business <laughs> oh god it's gonna be horrible isn't it it's the best it's freaking awesome so actually this is why this is such a great case study because the website this is the website for this business Shaw Electrical, yo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, well, okay, so all right. So Google is not pulling services from this website. Um, well, uh, I will argue that only in one, for one reason, and that is called semantics. Okay. Yeah, sure. There's synonyms like, oh, electrician. You, you, We know you're an electrician, so you probably do all these other things. So I get that, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if you look at there, if you look at, this is my my play around with uh listing and so I, I test things on it. and so testing services has been awesome yeah just um you know I think what I, would be interesting though is, is if you say put in a plumbing keyword right into services with that rank because there um, is no semantic correlation for plumbing well it actually i did i do have some data on that if i go to the end of my rankings it's like what keywords did we not rank for and there are things like this general so this is one of the services google suggested general repairs Okay. They also suggested remodeling. They suggested like installation. Like, I don't even know why they would suggest Weird. that. But, okay. but these ones here, I added them or general construction and adding the service has zero impact on my rankings for that or electric specific car term. charger installation. Interesting. Yeah. So I did not rank for any of those because they weren't electrician related. So I think that if I added plumber, it if wouldn't Google was suggesting an, a predefined service for plumber and I added it, I doubt that it would actually have that impact on ranking. But I actually just thought of something that we could test right now. You know, we were asking the question about do changes on your Google business profile impact your organic rankings? There this is go, a right? pretty good test bed for that. So let's look at organic. I added the services. We know it impacted local rankings. Did it have any change to organic? No. So I didn't Dang. rank for organic before and I don't rank for organic now. So that's interesting. It did not have any impact on organic, but that's only one section of your Google business profile. I realized, but at, at the very Did it least, impact uh, maps for you? It, I was looking, this chart is maps. Oh, okay. What about the other, what about organic? The other I mean, one is uh, local, local pack. And I think I broke the pack on a couple terms. Yeah. But yeah, because I think I, I only broke it on one term. On round two though, when I added the, the services back in, there were no pack um, rankings. Interesting. So, the conclusion here is that services do impact rankings, 
But as we saw, it wasn't enough to push me into the local pack for a lot of those terms. But as I will also say, this is a nothing listing and a nothing website. Perhaps if I had a really built out website, I might actually rank a lot. You know what else is interesting too? When you're looking at, go back to the pack rankings. On the same timeline, the pack rankings showed up for like a day or two and then they're gone. And then they're gone, yeah. yeah. Even though when you're looking at maps rankings, you still had that plateau across until you remove them. Yeah. So and it's by almost the way, like it affected it enough for them to put it in there and be like, yeah, nah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's almost like you, you can add the services. They will have a positive impact, but you should also back up your services with content on your website and, you know, of other course. things that you're doing, which, which of course makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody in the audience. <clears throat> so after we have all three of these studies out from Joy, Darren, and myself, do you want us all to come on here and talk about this? Services? Yeah. Was, that would be, that's always a fun conversation. We should that do a webinar excellent. about it, just about services. Oh, yeah. yeah. See if we can get someone else's tested. I bet you that Tim, Tim Colert, that guy, he likes to test stuff. Has he tested this? I, I'll have to ask him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because it'd, it'd be. I mean, I, I'm. I personally think we should get as many tests about this as possible until it's just like, all right, never mind. No more tests. Totally. Are we running out year. of time? Should we take audience questions? Uh, audience questions? Let's see. We're at ten fifty right now. Let's let's get to audience questions because it's time to come on down. <laughs> See, I got it. You guys asked, Woo-hoo! and you shall receive. That is fun. Excellent. I like it. Excellent, like excellent, it. excellent. Yeah, we, we actually we crowdsource this now. So Greg started up doing the sound and sounds, and it's like now we just ask everybody in the audience every once in a while. We're just like, hey, do you guys want to sound for that? What do you want? <laughs> uh, I All love right. this question. Actually, uh, I don't know if this is Al Anthony or AI Anthony, but the question is, how did Darren verify that business? Oh yeah, Ooh, such a great question. And so this is a, this is a great question because it's a fun story. So in 2014, I did uh, some research where we were testing the distribution of the data aggregators. I presented this at MozCon Local. And so one of the businesses, the fake businesses that we created to submit to Data Axel, what was called Info Group at the time, was Straw Electrical. So we made this fake business. We submitted it to Info Group. And then we also, oh no, actually Shaw Electrical was the one that we did all the data aggregators and we built out all the citations. So this fake business had a very strong presence out on the internet for years. And then mm. I think it was around like 2017 or something, um, I, I somehow came across it in Google Maps. And then I pressed the button. I was like, oh, claim this profile. I was like, oh, let me see if I can claim my Shaw Electrical profile. Because it, it had already come up as a listing that Google had found on the internet and created a listing for. And so I went, claim this, claim this listing. And I think because my account was already, this website, I was already set up with Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Uh, and because the it had like five years of history on the internet, that profile, Google knew that I was the owner because I was logged into the same account, my my own Darren Shaw account, Darren at whitespark.ca account. And this was so connected to that account already. Instant verification. It was like, I didn't have to phone verify. I didn't have to yeah. postcard verify. It just showed up in my Google business profile. And I was like, what? That's it? Oh, all right, great. And so then I had control over this profile. I doubt that it would work today. Google has cracked down on uh, you know how easy it is to create listings. They're, it's a lot harder to create listings now, but that's how it happened. It's a fun question with a fun story. Actually, believe it or not, it does work today. Um, right. yeah, so Google search console, it's, it's a little known thing, but if you have Google search console connected to your website, um, basically, and then you create a Google business profile, it gives you a higher chance totally of getting automatically. Verified. It just knows that, oh yeah, this, you must be the owner of this listing because you're connected already on search console. Because you've gone through this, the step basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a lot, there's other factors that are in there that I just won't talk about. Um, but but that is one of the more key factors. All right. Well, ping me on Slack later and tell me all about them. 
<laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's go through chat really quick because there was some questions in here that did not make it into Q&A. Everybody, what the heck? Uh, all right. So let's see. All right. Uh, so Joey Abner says, hey, Darren, I found the new format much more informative for a total picture. Also digging your video snippets, by the way. Just saying. Thanks. All right. Um, okay, so let's see. Anything interesting? Uh, Stephen Asman says it sounds like most responses are uh, anecdotal and not actually tested. Interesting. Okay, that is true, though. Yeah, yeah that's SEO in a nutshell. Everything, yeah, right? Everything is anecdotal. We do test, so it's like anecdotal based off of what we're seeing. So, like the services test is a great example. We've tested that, and it's like pretty conclusive we other things are not necessarily anecdotal it's like keywords in the in the description <clears throat> we've tested it we tried we put keywords in description weird words that we wouldn't rank for anyways no no rankings and so those the, this stuff is informed by testing seo testing but nothing in seo is conclusive it's all slightly speculative because google doesn't give us our algorithm Yep, exactly. And I think they should. They should give us our algorithm, right? I would take it. Yeah, I would too. I, I would mind too. Checking it out. Mm -hmm. All right. So Je Jeffrey has a question for you. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, okay. So let's just get into some just the general Q and A, and then we'll be done for the day. And so Jeffrey is asking, uh, is there a way to reclaim a permanently closed listing? My yep. client would like to regain access to the closed listing that is under an X employee's account. Uh, easy peasy. Ben, you want to answer that one? Yeah. Not sure why not. It's easy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, reclaiming closed, permanent closed listing is pretty easy. The number one, if it's on maps, you can just go ahead and suggest that it's open, right? And it's going to open up by the way. I mean, it's like 90% yep. of the time, unless you have a totally. really bad account and you're not trusted <laughs> at all by Google, it's going to reopen. Uh, and then you just click on own this business and you just go through the process basically of trying to claim the, the, the profile. It's seriously easy. Even if it is under an ex-employee's account, that means it's going to fail. And then within three days, you'll be able to go through the process. All right. Uh, let's see. Here's a ranking question. How much weight does a website redirect hold on affecting local rankings? Uh, I'll answer that one. So basically, uh, the redirect, like, we're, I think we must be talking about the negative effect. So if you have a redirect, does that have a negative impact on your local rankings? It has always been best practice to Make sure that the website URL you have on your Google business profile does not redirect. So if you have a redirecting URL, change it to whatever the destination of that redirect is in your on your Google business profile. That's important. So if you've changed your domain name and you still have the old one on your Google business profile, you should change it. I think that this used to be more of a detrimental thing, but I think Google's gotten better at sorting it out and it probably doesn't have that much of a negative impact. But I actually have heard in the past, not so much recently, about like, Profiles getting suspended for redirects. And I don't know. Ben, do you have any thoughts on that one? Um, a profile can actually get uh, suspended suspended for a redirect. This is more along the lines of like, so let's go say we're doing, you know, Shaw Electrical, right? You have Shaw Electrical in your GBP. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Shaw Electrical goes .com? to shawelectrical.com, Shaw, is what you're saying? Right. Yeah, shawelectrical.com. And so, however, it redirects to Shaw Plumbing. Dot com. Right. So since it is a bad experience and the expected content yep. is different, that will cause the suspension any day. Yeah. Yeah. That there you go. So that makes sense. If it's if like you're redirecting to a completely different topic that doesn't match what the entity at Google is all about. Let's say the entity is all about electricians. Now I've just redirected to a Home Depot landing page. It's like weird. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that goes back to like, you know, malware, you know, hacked websites, things like that. That's really where that originates from anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yep. So that'll do it. All right. So, uh, and Ray's question is pretty much we've already answered it. Are you seeing, I've heard of new Google business profiles getting verified on the spot without any verification method? 
the other day we added two and both of them got verified on the spot congratulations by the, the way other guys day, yeah yeah mm-hmm. Uh, just wondering if it's a glitch or has Google changed something or just really good luck. Could be that search console trick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should, we should ask Barry if it's new. Mm. Yeah. Barry, yeah. is it new? Ask, ask Barry. Nope. Yeah. Uh, it's not so, new. I have some thoughts about this. Uh, <laughs> as far as I understand, you you can often get through phase one verification instantly or quickly with an easy verification method, phone or email, um, sometimes instant. Um, But if it's been a few days, you might get hit with phase two verification. And that's where they're going to ask you to video uh, verify. Um, That's what I've been doing. Yeah, I I saw that Twitter thread. Okay, I'm going to clear some things up really quickly. Uh, And why I can clear this up is I was in the room when the Googlers were talking about this and that it was coming mm-hmm. all right so just to clear this up some categories and some profiles based on accounts account history yeah correct might will re- will get required for that phase two verification okay all right. whatever so it has nothing to do with time lags or anything like that it is literally just a function of the business profile and account um it doesn't happen category. like if it's garage door if it's locksmith yeah if it's a duress category which is 32 duress categories oh so uh <laughs> yeah it doesn't everybody <laughs> so um so anyway <laughs> um but yeah so 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 anyway that's why we see video verification video verification of course is much more prevalent right now uh you can expect that to be hell more prevalent in the future it's going to be the norm eventually however that being said postcard text call etc is still going to exist it's just not going to be you're not going to see it all the time so sometimes you might get that text call and then yes it might trigger video verification because google just needs to kind of really be sure that you're a real baby boy basically It's amazing to me that they'll invest the resources to review all of these video verifications. Like if that becomes the norm, it's like Google doesn't invest resources in, into local, into Google business profiles. It's free. It's like they like how big is the team that's looking at all these video verification videos? Think about it this way. Um, the easiest way to explain this is, is that the the resources that they have to put behind postcard verification is pretty enormous right if you think Mm -hmm. about it number one they have to mail out the postcard there's a cost they have to print out the postcard right there's a cost Mm. postcards may or may not uh, get to their destination mostly not they almost never get to the (laughs) yeah exactly right so there's an inaccuracy as far as the data all the the support never got my postcard yeah. There's all the right exactly. You've got and the support easy to that goes check your neighbor's that. mail and steal their postcard. Yeah. There's hijacking attempts. Then there's of course the whole thing of oh I got this piece of Google crap in the mail and I'm going to go ahead and throw it away. Right. right? Oh, yeah. That's the biggest problem. Exactly. So you know so if you look at all those problems together, really is it really costing more? To have That's somebody yep. sold. I'm sold on video, and now I get why Google does it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yep. video, and and also on top of that is is that video is hard to fake. Well, exactly. It's well, like, and look at how many maybe places, not with the advent of AI, but and look at how many places the mail doesn't reliably arrive. Yeah, correct. And you know they're basing it on the U.S., which has pretty good mail delivery, but outside the U.S. Everybody's got a cell phone that can record video, so yeah, it's right. more yep. reliable. Exactly. And as we know, well, I mean, I hope everybody knows, Google builds things at scale for the world. Mm-hmm. And if it is only for a single use case that were, uh, or even a large use case, they don't do it. Mm-hmm. So in this case, video, like Greg was just saying, is for everybody. Everybody can do video. You, Hands even down. in like, so basically, uh, you know, developing countries, video is still prominent enough that they can, it, it's a it's a strategy that'll work for them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And again, like I said, the biggest thing I think personally, well, I know is is that it's really really difficult to fake video. Yeah, 
Well, I'm going to try. That's actually one of my video ideas. I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to try and make a fake listing and totally, and I actually thought it would be funny if I like, I wear a disguise in my video. Oh, that like, would be so I'm awesome. I'm going to a mustache and the glasses and I'm going to go and try and get a listing verified with video verification down the street. I'm going to put up like fake signage and everything. That's my idea. Just do, just get a put on a horse head. <laughs> no, I like the glasses and I'll wear like an incognito hat. So I look like the Google incognito. <laughs> yeah. You need to send him an anonymous <laughs> attendee shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. The and I actually, I've never had shirt. a chance to go through video verification. I want to, I, I've never experienced that. I want to like get a sense of it and then I will. I'll yeah. I mean, uh, well, no, it's, it's, uh, you can't actually right now, just so you know, uh, video verification no. is borked at the moment oh all right well um, that's good information i don't want to waste my time <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's it's kind of worked at the moment but uh but, but which is actually pretty freaking awesome we were talking about this in the green room is that because uh now you have to you pretty much you're forced to do offline verification uh -huh. with which uh which with when you're not getting the postcard so normally you wouldn't get the postcard oh. so you have to request video verification yep. and instead they're just replying back saying hey just give us all these pieces of proof Mm -hmm. And if you can give us all these pieces of proof, they automatically verify you. Oh, well, yeah. But it's easy to doctor. Uh, not with the list that they're asking for. Okay. Send me that list on Slack. It was after this call, please. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> 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 so, um, but yeah, anyway. So, <clears throat> yes. Video verification for the win. Darren, uh, we are at time. Give us some closing thoughts, please, on the local search ranking factors and sneak peek what's coming next year. Oh, boy. What's coming next year? I haven't thought that far ahead. Um, closing thoughts on the local search ranking factors. I don't know. I think I covered most of them. I will tell you, you should look at the AI section. I think it's very interesting how local SEOs are using AI. Of course, this is the hot topic right now. And the stuff at the top of the the list is not the interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm using AI to help generate content ideas. Okay, everyone's doing that. You've heard that a thousand times. The interesting stuff on the AI list is the stuff at the bottom. So how people are using it in creative ways, inventive ways, that is, there's some really interesting ideas in there that might help you in your SEO work. I love that. Uh, if you're in uh, local services ads, it's helpful to look at that, except for the fact that it really seems to be highly skewed towards reviews. And of course, we uh, may have heard that review spam in LSAs is a massive problem. So I don't know. That's uh, that's a whole. Oh, it is topic. a massive problem. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So yeah, next cool. year, I'm hoping actually next year that I can keep the freaking format the same because every year I tend to change the format and then I, I make like weeks and weeks of work for myself. And so that next year, I hope I've actually finally got a formula where I can just recreate my survey because I did it in Survey Monkey this year. And so recreate the survey, tweak it a little bit, invite some new people, add a few more questions, and then it's off to the races. So that's my goal. And then also this format, I think like the new display of it looks pretty good. So I yep. want to kind of make it. Uh, yeah, I love this new format personally. Yeah. Yep. And so everybody out there, you know, as you know, Make sure, make yourself known on Twitter. Be awesome because you are, and maybe you'll contribute next year to the local search ranking factors. With yeah. that, we've got an episode on the books. Thank you, Darren, for coming Thanks, in Darren. and sharing your wisdom. And yep. uh, thank you, Greg, of course, as usual, my friend. And everybody, have a great weekend. See you next time. Yeah.